Hey folks, it's Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. In case you haven't noticed, that's our farm gate. We had a little bit of a whoopsie daisy the other day when I was pulling the seed drill out of the driveway here. So we we're heading down the hill and just cruising along. The gate automatically closes after two minutes. So evidently two minutes had passed since I had opened it up at the top of the hill and it just moved this far and cream the gate. So we'll go walk around the gate a little bit. I had some necessary repairs to do anyway, so this will serve as an installation guide for the Mighty Mule Gate Opener 360, and you'll get to have some fun with me. Let's walk around it, and I'll show you where the gate hit the seed drill. All right, woo! Stony Ridge, from Stony Ridge, Stony Ridge Farm. You can see it just gouged a little square piece out of it. As I look back in the rear view mirror, the gate just folded up. So it folded up on itself right there, and it folded up on itself right here, and it also damaged the Mighty Mule. And this is an older version of the Mighty Mule. It's the Mighty Mule 350, and we're gonna install the Mighty Mule 360. And you can see it twisted some stuff up here, kind of made a mess. So believe it or not, we had another heavy duty 16 foot gate just sitting around here on the farm. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hang the new gate and we're gonna get busy here mounting up all the mounting hardware. And I'm also gonna repaint these posts. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sand down these posts. We're gonna install the gate hanger in this hole right here. I'll take you over here and show you. There's a little hole right there. We're gonna install the gate hanger and there's one down low right here. And then we're gonna paint everything up sand it down, prime it, paint it, and get it rocking. I've got a sanding sponge, and I've got some self-etching primer, okay? And I bought all this stuff on Amazon. I'm a big fan of Amazon, by the way. There's links down below in each video to all the stuff I use in most of the videos. Camera equipment, lights, all that stuff. There's links down below. And I also got this guy on Amazon right here. This is a solar powered, which looks like the solar is kind of wearing out. It's been up there for about two years, but it's a solar powered, gate post light. Pretty cool. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to sand up my post, just get it rough, and then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of self-etching primer on anything that's raw metal, and then I'm going to go over it with some high quality, high grade black spray paint. Let's get busy sanding on this thing. Now you can see some spots on here are really dirty, and that's the main reason for sanding. I just want to clean it up good enough that the paint will stick I know I'm going to have to resurface this and repaint it probably every two, three, maybe four years whenever the paint starts to flake off, but this is a six inch piece of square steel tubing set five feet in the ground. It'd take a bulldozer to get this thing out. Pretty awesome. I think we installed this sometime just before we started the Stony Ridge Farmer YouTube channel. You can see how it's starting to get a matte finish to it and you can see that old paint coming off. Take a little pride in your work, do a good job and it'll last you. We're pretty much done with this post and we're going to go ahead and hit it with a coat of black paint and anywhere there's bare metal on this we'll go ahead and use the self-etching primer. So while we're at it why not give you a good tutorial on spray paint. Make sure you shake your can for about two minutes okay make sure you shake it really good. Whenever you're using spray paint you're always shaking okay and this self-etching primer, there's only a couple spots right here, and I'm just going to kind of touch those little spots up just like this, okay? All we're trying to do is get a coat of protectant on there. Now when we start slinging black paint on this, we're going to start at the very, very bottom of the post, okay? We don't want to start at the top of the post because we don't know exactly how the paint is going to behave as it comes out of the can. So we want to start at the bottom of the post. That's a less noticeable place and we'll do a good job. Let's talk about a little bit of spray paintology real quick. I like a good spray nozzle that sprays a fan, not a circle, but a fan of spray paint out. Okay. And I also have this little Rust-Oleum trigger gun that basically attaches right onto your spray paint can just like so. And now I've got a spray gun versus a dude wearing his finger out, okay? So if you're gonna be doing a big project and you're spray painting a whole lot, this thing is an indispensable item. I'll post a link down below, okay? This might seem like a gigantic infomercial, but you know, I hope it helps you. I hope it does. Keep shaking that paint, shake, shake, shake. I like to set my spray paint cans out in the sun just before I start spray painting with them. The reason I do this is it seems to build up more pressure and I get a more even spray. Just a little tip. First of all, I'm gonna test a little spot. See how my paint's coming out. Okay, 
And then I'm gonna get down here, just hit it just like that. Now we're waiting for our paint to dry. This is the Mighty Mule 360 gate opener right here. And it's hung up on some wires. Let's get rid of those wires. And this is what we're gonna install today. This will handle up to a 16 foot farm gate, just like what we have right here. And it comes with a little remote. And if you have power, ran to it, which we don't have power. We're gonna use a solar panel. So you might be able to tell that I overbuilt this a little bit. So I overbuilt the post and I overbuilt the gate opener. In other words, I'm using a car battery versus the little small battery that Mighty Mule makes. I'm using a 12 volt marine battery, which is gonna last and last and last. It's a gel type marine battery. And the reason we did that is because we want it to last for a long time. And if the charge gets way, way down on a regular type car battery, it can cause damage to the battery versus the marine battery can drain all the way down and be charged all the way back up. First thing I've got to do is unscrew the bottom of the casing on the Mighty Mule gate opener here. I think it's three screws that hold it in place. Maybe three screws. There we go. And the little cover comes off and we're going to use all the existing wiring that was already here, but we need to make sure that we put it all back in the right place. So got to pay close attention here. Basically, I'm going to take my phone and take a snapshot underneath here. And that way I can wire the other one up the exact same way that this one's wired up. Now I can look at this circuit board and tell it's a little bit different than the other circuit board, but we'll match it up right. So here's your circuit board, okay? Now this is your stall. That's in case the wind is blowing really hard or something bumps your gate. This dial right here is the amount of time before the gate automatically closes. This is for your solar input right here, and this is your auxiliary out. That's in case you have a beeper or a gate lock, I do believe. And that's pretty much it. So that's what you need to know. And this is the main power coming in. And that leads out to a long piece of wire with a little remote lead on it. And that right there is your antenna. We've got a lot of junk to take off the post and you can see all this junk right here. We've got a bolt broken off in here. I've got an easy out. We're gonna try to get that bolt out. I've got a bit of paint on my nose. Hey, <laughs> I think it put more paint on my nose. <laughs> got to remove all the goodies off this gate too. So we've got some solar lights on the back of the gate. So if we open it from the house, we can see. And the house is way up there, but we can open it all the way from the house and you can tell that the gate's moving because the motion light comes on. All right, guys, we're going to come in here with our punch and get right on this guy and basically line him up right there. Right there's our little divot. Now we'll come in with the drill and say a prayer that we can get this out. Yeah. Now the goal here really is to just put a little divot in here. You don't have to drill very deep and I really should have got some cutting oil to put on my bit. And then we'll take the easy out and extract it, hopefully. Now we have several different sizes of extractors. I think this is gonna be our little guy right here. Mm. All right, so we're going to increase the size of our drill bit here. So here's our hole. Here's our easy out. We slip it in the hole. We reverse our drill. It's designed to bite. It's also designed to have a better battery in your drill. Mm. Drill isn't going to handle it. I had to run back to the shop to get this little T handle so I could put it on here. Work a little bit better on this scenario. Hopefully it'll fit. If not, then maybe using a wrench. This is a pretty cool adjustable wrench. It's a vice grip adjustable wrench in one. So we'll put it on here, get it in position, squeeze our vice grip and try to back this out. There she goes. Hopefully it'll work which it's not working, but it's doing something. Back to the drawing board here. Good gracious. Ooh, baby. I know you want to come out. So I'd have been totally glad to just drill it all the way out had I not had to use those threads that are in that post. Let's make sure we didn't ruin the threads. So everything looks good. We're going to go ahead and get our mount mounted up, our mount to hang the Mighty Mule gate opener. Here's our old bracket. And as you can tell, it got twisted. Now, here are our new bracket pieces, and we'll assemble our new bracket pieces, and we'll mount them up to the post here. So this portion mounts to the post, okay? So pretend I'm a post. 
that portion mounts to the post and then this little area swings and it's indexed in here and you basically just mount screws in these little areas to adjust for where you want your gate and we have a gate swinging inward and we're pretty much going to match what we already had pretty simple stuff but basically it's just held together with a little bolt here then we'll bolt it to the post. So we've got it just about mounted up here and we're just gonna snug up our bolts. We're just gonna mock it up. We're not gonna put it in really, really tight yet because we haven't got everything all set up. We're gonna mount the gate up, guys. Okay, we're on there. All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about leveling the gate. Now we want the gate to be level both this way and this way, okay? So in other words, the top and the bottom here need to be level and this end and that end also need to be level. In order to do this, we have several adjustments. We can adjust this little connector right here in and out to make this portion level. And then we can adjust our bolt that's running through our post here, both in and out to bring it level up and down this way. And it has to be just about perfectly level so it's almost effortless to open the gate. So now we basically can open the gate with one finger very very effortless that's the way it has to be for this mighty mule gate opener so basically you just hook all the wires up just like the instructions say to do uh, the solar panel goes to the solar panel in charging and the uh, power just plugs right up and your battery's all hooked up we're already hooked up here so we're going to go ahead and hit the button for the first time and run this thing all the way out now it's called a mighty mule not a mighty fast so it goes kind of slow we're going to extend it all the way out and then we're going to go ahead and put our mounting bracket on our gate. If I remember correctly, this is the biggest pain in the butt part of the whole thing. Okay, so we're extended out to the furthest point here. And here's our mounting bracket, and it has a little hole in it. And basically, very, very simply, it mounts right up to here. And that's it. But you want to have room for adjustment. So you see the slots in here? It needs to be able to slide forward and aft in order to make the correct adjustment. So what we're going to do is mark it right in the center of these holes. And we've got a piece of flat stock with holes drilled in it. And we'll put that on the back side and mount our bolts to it. Now we'll paint all this stuff red to match the gate later on. Okay folks, so we've got our mark set right here and basically we're just going to drill straight through here so we can mount our bracket. To a person that's never done this before, this might be the most intimidating part. So I'm going to take a punch and I'll punch in the center of these two little areas and that way my drill bit will fit right in there. Hammer time! Now I've got my trusty neighbor Tony. Hello! <laughs> got my trusty neighbor Tony out here helping me. Good fella. Alright, now you just want to make sure you're shooting level and straight when you go through this. Think I'm a pretty straight shooter. <laughs> drill humor. True drill bit connoisseurs may not like this. But I call that reaming out the hole. Everything's looking good here. Fit her on there. Ooh, that's so pretty. It's better than the first gate. Yeah, I swear it'll hold up next time I hit it with a grain drill. All right, so we're putting washers and lock washers on this side and we'll snug him up nice Oop, and we'll drop one nice to have a good neighbor to help out here so we'll drop our pin in and then we'll put our pin inside our pin our little retaining pin in between we put one of these little nylon bushings right in there just to complicate things a little bit further but it's so that the gate slides open and closed much much easier and we'll line those up and then also if your gate fails and you're headed to work early early in the morning this is something for you to lose when you get ready to unhook your gate and open it manually, which happens sometimes. All right, now we're gonna hit our Mighty Mule gate opener, but we gotta watch it really close right now because the limits aren't quite set on it yet. And I'll show you how to set the limits so it closes firmly and opens to a certain point. And it's designed, if it bumps into something, it'll move back, I think, two inches. It'll hit it and move back either two or four inches. The old gate opener that we had was up here for three and a half years. It did really good. Okay, so there are a lot of adjustments on here, and you can see what I mean. This part has to be stationary. This has to be locked in place, so watch. See how it moves? So we'll close the gate here. 
So what we have to do is find the sweet spot and drop a pin right in here and a bolt right in there. All right, guys, it's getting dark on us. We're finalizing the installation. And basically what you do with the gate in the closed position, you reach up here and you tap the limit set button. You tap that button and that sets the closed limit. Then you open it, then let the gate fully close on its own, and then it should be all set, ready to go. Pretty cool. Well guys, we got the gate all set up. Thanks a lot for watching Stony Ridge Farmer today. I appreciate you. And we learned our lesson. Pay attention and don't run into the gate. <laughs> be sure you click that like button, subscribe to the channel. It's starting to rain on me, so I'm getting my butt in the house. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Woo! We'll come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Rudolph, I'm a reverse Rudolph on the black nosed cowboy here. Ugh, what we got going? All right, back to normal.